up guys, welcome back to another camera review. Today, we are looking at an interesting camera. It's the OM-1, and you'll notice I didn't say the brand name. That's because this is not an Olympus camera, even though it says Olympus on the camera. This is OM Systems, which is basically the manufacturer previously known as Olympus. So a little bit confusing. This is their first camera release, and it's, it's a pretty big camera release as well under OM Digital, but I think the Olympus branding is still on there to avoid kind of confusion and to help with the transition. But essentially, this is a lot like an Olympus EM1 Mark IV. And I had this camera for about a week, so I really wanted to kind of test it out in lots of different situations, you know, landscape, fast moving subjects, tracking birds, you know, test out that autofocus, low light, even after dark, video, which is a big focus as well on this camera. And lots of, lots of different things to test out a lot of the different things this camera can do, including autofocus, which was kind of being touted as a pretty big deal with this camera. But I want to be completely sort of candid and honest and open. I went into using this camera with some preconceived notions. You know, I use a lot of cameras for my job. And with Olympus, I kind of have an idea of what to expect. You know, it's going to be kind of decent. It's going to be some decent stuff, but I'm probably not going to be blown away. And that's how I approached this camera. You know, I wanted to give it a fair shot, but that's what I was kind of thinking in my mind. You know, especially this is EM1 Mark IV, so it'd be a bit of, bit of a step up, but is it going to compete with some of the full frame options that we've been having recently? You know, what's it going to be like in the new market we're in? Does it, does it still stay relevant? And I've got to say, I was, I was wrong. I was super wrong. I cannot believe how much this camera surprised me. Each and everything I tried new, I just really, really liked using the camera. And I've got to say, it's, it's outside of, you know, the images look great and we'll get onto this, HDR, uh, dynamic range, all that kind of stuff. Great. The autofocus, oh, wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't ready for the autofocus to be as good as it is. But we'll get onto that in a second. Aside from all of that, this has got to be one of the more fun cameras that I've used for ages. I don't remember the last time I had so much fun with a camera, you know, trying out lots of different things. It's got so many interesting, fun things for you to do, but also that get you great results. So let's dive into a little bit of what this camera is, and then we can talk about why I felt this way and, and how I kind of came to this conclusion. So first of all, of course, it's still micro four thirds. We're not completely reinventing the wheel here, but we have got a brand new stacked back illuminated live MOS sensor. So you've got better dynamic range. You've got an extra stop of that. You've got two stops of noise performance improvement, you know, better low light performance. There's quite a lot there. And there's a new processor as well. It just makes everything very quick. So that is really noticeable. You boot up the camera and it just turns on very, very fast. The overall processing speed is about three times faster, which is great. And that applies both in terms of continuous shooting, in terms of actual loading up speed, but also in terms of things like doing in-camera HDR merging or the high resolution shot. Now on previous cameras in Olympus, that high resolution shot might take I don't know, like it felt like a long time to process in the camera. So you'd be, you'd take the shot and then you'd be standing there for ages waiting for it to process so that you could check to see if it was sharp and to make sure that it was okay. But now it really is, takes the photo like that, done. And then it processes it in just a few seconds. So you are really just standing there for just a moment and then you can check it. And I've got to say, I never had a problem with the high resolution shot. The handheld mode is 50 megapixels and it was never not sharp. The image stabilization is so good that it is able to take a fantastic, a fantastic high res shot. So while yes, you're still looking around 24 megapixels for the sensor, you can definitely get some high resolution shots handheld or on a tripod as well. Now, while we're just touching on that high res mode, there are a bunch of modes that you can try out, which at first might seem a little bit gimmicky, but this plays in exactly to what I'm talking about with how fun this camera was to use. So you've got things like Live ND, which I hated on previous cameras. I couldn't get it to work properly. I just didn't like how it would function. It just wasn't very good as far as I'm concerned. Now, it was incredibly easy. It was so straightforward and I had a really good time just trying to get some long exposure stuff. I even tried to do a handheld. I probably got a bit carried away trying to do a handheld 10 second shot, but it's a great thing to have just straight there available to you. You've got things like in-camera HDR merging, which is a really interesting way of taking a photo. So in a high contrast area, I'll show you a couple of examples here. Here's a one without the HDR merging. This is what it's like just as a JPEG straight out of the camera. You know, you've got some bright areas, you've got some dark areas, and this is just the HDR merging in camera. So essentially it takes a bunch of different shots, it brackets it basically, it takes a bunch of different exposures, merges them together, 
gives you the final shot. And it does it in just a few seconds. So the, the actual taking of the photos is like that. And then it'll actually just process that for you again in just a few seconds. So that speed is definitely a huge improvement. And Olympus or OM Digital are clearly very kind of confident with these systems because there's now a button on the top of the camera to switch straight to that high resolution mode. So whereas it may have been kind of a, a side option in the past, maybe it wasn't the best, it's now a, a first and foremost option to get those high resolution, high detail shots straight away. Because you wouldn't put a button on the top of the camera unless you were definitely sure it was always going to work. So I think that's actually a really good option. I think even though you might initially think, oh, still sort of 24 megapixels, I don't think that's even really what it is. I think 50 megapixels, unless you're doing far shooting, which we'll come on to in a minute, I think 50 megapixels handheld is so achievable all the time. And then of course you've got 80 megapixels in the tripod mode as well. Now all of that, the high resolution shots, the bracketing and then putting it all together, all of that kind of stuff is made so much better because of the image stabilization. Now, we hear a lot about image stabilization these days, right? It's a big thing in the industry. Everyone's got great image stabilization, but this is really, really fantastic. You can get incredibly steady shots using the IS. Now it's up to eight stops of image stabilization and it really does feel like that as well. You even have a few different kind of tools you can use to see how it works, including a little kind of assist mode where it'll draw a little box on the screen, have a little circle. So as you move, you need to try and keep that circle in the center of that square to try and keep things as steady as possible. So it just helps you to visualize your own movement and how you might be affecting the stabilization. And that can really assist you in taking kind of longer exposure photos handheld. Now, like I said, I tried this for landscape, which was great both in terms of in the day, both in terms of in the forest, which is always interesting, because you get that kind of high contrast sun coming through, but then shadows, sunset, which again is a great kind of, a great test of things like, you know, light and contrast and all that kind of stuff. It's a good, it's a good test to try these different lighting situations out after dark as well, which is always interesting to see how noise is gonna work and, and how it's gonna fare with a higher ISO situation and all that kind of stuff. But I also wanted to try out some, some faster stuff as well. So tracking birds, for example, in flight, you know, doing subject detection, which we'll talk about in a second, doing photos of my dog running. So I have a puppy collie, which is the perfect, subject for a fast moving kind of darting subject. So that's super, super handy to go out and take photos of her. And I tried all of that because what I wanted to test out was the autofocus, because as I'm sure you're aware, autofocus now just across the industry is so crazy good that it's really important to nail it. it it's not kind of good enough anymore for it to be fine or for it to be okay, because so many cameras do it so well. That was the thing I was most interested to see how this camera would handle. Now, this is where I was super, super blown away. I've talked before about being blown away by certain autofocus systems, but this one, I just was not ready for how good it was. Not only did it not let me down, did it, I didn't miss any shots because of the autofocus, it was unbelievable in the way that it would detect subjects. So you have a, an option to detect different types of subjects in the camera. You can set it to detect things like birds, animals, people, faces, eyes. Obviously that's pretty standard, but also planes, trains, stuff like that. But I found that it would detect subjects, even like, for example, a lighthouse or a skyscraper. And the way that it would do it is it would draw a box around the subject and then it would track it through the frame as you move the camera. So whether that's through the viewfinder or through the flip out screen, it would actually track that subject. And this was just unbelievable. You know, you, you've probably seen this sort of thing in other cameras before, but I've, I've never seen it done this well, ever. It, especially with birds. I mean, it would draw a box around a bird, fly, I mean, a tiny little bird in the frame flying, and then it would draw a smaller box around that bird's head. And it would track that bird flying. And if it went out of the frame, as soon as I move the camera back in, it's just straight back on. There's no hunting for it. There's no kind of moment where it doesn't get it. It just immediately grabs that. You know, with my dog, it would draw a larger box around my dog's body, around her whole kind of form, and then a smaller box around her head. And that doesn't matter if she's running towards the camera, running away, it would draw the box around her, you know, running sideways, doesn't matter. It would track it perfectly all the time. And I'm not pressing a button to do that. It's just doing that automatically. Now, of course, I've got it on continuous autofocus, but it's just tracking that so that all I have to do is press the shutter, done. 
photos captured autofocus is on point. So the only times I miss are when I either can't keep up with the bird or, or my dog or whatever it is. Now I'm using multiple lenses for this. I'm using the Mark II 12 to 40 millimeter lens. Lovely, lovely lens, great all rounder, but also the 150 to 400 millimeter lens. And they use that especially for the birds and that tracking is just out of this world. Absolutely outstanding. It's using something called Cross Quad Pixel AF and it's AI detection to detect these different subjects. But like I say, that just worked. I hesitate to say flawlessly, but I never ever had a problem with it. So it's essentially using four direction phase detection data together with color and contrast to create a depth map of the image. And then that's how it detects the subject quickly and then tracks it. And that means you have that tracking of birds in flight. You have the animal AF. There's an algorithm for planes, for trains. And they told us that the autofocus is two times more accurate and three times faster than in previous cameras. Now, I believe it. It may even be faster than that. It felt incredibly quick. And like I say, never missed. I was the only one who missed. The autofocus didn't miss. So that's that's great. That's so reliable, to be honest. And especially if you're doing wildlife, you know, this, this would make a great wildlife system or sports, you know, because the, the Micro Four Thirds lenses are so much smaller and lighter. This would be fantastic because that autofocus is so reliable. Now, part of that speed is obviously because of the new processor. And I mentioned that this is faster just all over the place. You've got the ability to shoot 120 frames a second with single focus or 50 frames a second continue focus, and that's with no blackout. And then of course, if you wanna use things like focus stacking, that's twice as fast to stack the image and to process it. So there's just speed improvements everywhere. But what about video? I hear you asking. Well, this is absolutely an area that has been improved upon, and I really actually felt like this would be a good video system. So I'm actually shooting on the OM-1 now, and there's a few reasons for that. I wanna show you what it looks like. I really actually like the look of the video that this produces. I'm shooting in log, so this is what it looks like ungraded, and then this is how I've graded it. But this is a really capable video system. I actually, I actually really enjoy using this to shoot video. So along with all the photo stuff that I've been really enjoying, it kind of carries over here. So for example, now shooting myself, I've got the flip out screen turned out so I can see myself. I can see there's a square around my head in the screen and then a smaller square around my eye. And as I move my head, it tracks it really, really well. So I don't have to think about that. It's got the like record frame around the little screen so I can see that I am definitely recording, which I know sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised. And that actually is super useful to have some kind of some kind of notification that I am definitely recording, which is really useful. So let's talk a little bit about the specs of the video. 4K 60, which is really good. Full HD up to 240 frames a second as well. 10-bit 422 internal, which is obviously really useful. These are professional video specs, which means you can shoot a huge amount of different stuff and be able to get some very professional, nice results. It's also able to shoot 12-bit ProRes RAW 444 external, which is really impressive. Other professional things which are really useful, things like H.265 is available, which is what I'm shooting in right now. Of course, I mentioned the log. We're shooting an OM log, which is 10-bit 422. So there's lots of room here for color grading, lots of room for how I want it to look in post, HLG video, and importantly, absolutely no time limit for recording, which is really useful as well. So this is definitely a very capable video system, very much a hybrid system. So it's not just all that super cool stuff with the photos. It's definitely, it's definitely a good hybrid system. And you know what? This just plays more into this kind of narrative that I've got with this camera where I'm just enjoying it so much more than I thought that I would. And that's Again, it's not supposed to be a, a dig at the camera or anything like that. I don't use Olympus that often. And the more I use this, the more not only enjoyable it is to use, but the more I'm finding it, it just such a useful tool. Everything I want it to do, everything I want to find in the camera is so easy to find. And it just does everything I want it to do. The autofocus that is so good in photo really carries over here with video. I mean, being able to, you know, have the head and the eye tracking, I know that's not new in the industry, but all this stuff just works immediately. I don't have to set anything up, it just works. And it works really, really well. So what about the camera itself? Well, first of all, it feels a lot like an EM1 Mark III, right? Because this is essentially like an EM1 Mark IV. But there are lots and lots of really nice touches. First and foremost, the new menus are so much better. If you've used Olympus, you probably know the menus are not always the best. They're a bit 
fiddly. There seem to be about 1,000 submenus. I can never find the exact thing that I want to find. And you know, you don't know why something doesn't work and all that kind of stuff. The new menus are incredibly useful. Everything's where you'd expect it to be. I found it very, very easy to navigate around, find the thing I wanted to change, and change it. Now, obviously, occasionally you can't change something, right? It's grayed out, you can't do it. But what I really, really liked with the camera is when you click on, or you you know, you press the joystick, the button in, for one of the options that's grayed out, it'll tell you why you can't do it. It might be the shooting mode you're in, it might be the lens you're using, it might be whatever. But it's really, really useful to know why you can't do something if you want to do it, rather than trying to have to figure it out. Of course, I mentioned the flip out screen, which is really, really nice. Of course, filming myself, that was very, very easy as well. But we also have the nice EVF, which is an upgraded OLED EVF with 5.76 million dots and a 120 frames a second refresh rate with no blackout, which is really nice to do photo or video through. Something else which I think is really, really cool about this camera is, you know, we talk about weather resistant, dust resistant kind of systems quite a lot, but OM Systems told me that this camera is the world's first IP53 rated camera. That means that it is extremely water, weather, dust, temperature resistant. And I actually asked them, would you be comfortable with me throwing a glass of water over the camera? And they said, yeah, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So you know what? I did it as the last thing I did before I gave the camera back because I don't know, it feels wrong. It doesn't feel right to throw a glass of water over a camera and I didn't want it to break and I didn't have a chance to use it for all kinds of other stuff, but it didn't break. I threw the glass of water over the camera and it was absolutely fine. It was completely just non-phased, nothing. It was all fine. Glass of water, not a problem. So I would feel very comfortable taking this out in you know, extremely bad weather. So storm chasing, you know, down by the sea, with massive waves, the wind, snow, whatever it is, I'd feel very, very comfortable with this. Obviously it depends a little bit on what lens you put on there. Some lenses are gonna be better for that than others and, and more resistant, but that is, you know, for wildlife photographers, for, for landscape photographers going off in, into, you know, big, I don't know, Arctic conditions, that is a great thing to know that the camera is definitely, definitely gonna be up to the task. Otherwise, we've got things like a new grip, which is very, very comfortable. We've got USB-C charging in the camera, which is great. We've got dual UHS-2 card slots, and we've got a new battery as well, the BLX-1, which is capable of 25% more shots. I've got to say, I know I've said it throughout the review, but I was so surprised by this camera. I just wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did. I really gelled with it. You know, it really clicked with me. I think a combination of the new menus, which make it so much easier to use. There's a lot of fun stuff in Olympus cameras, a lot of useful tools in there, you know, to use for photographers and now obviously for videographers. There have been in the past videographers, but this feels like another massive step up in that way. And I just, I'm so happy that this camera is as good as it is. So, you know, I'd love to know your opinion on this. What do you think? Are you surprised? by my reaction to it. Is this something that appeals to you? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments all of your thoughts. Of course, questions as well. I spent as much time getting to know the camera as I could. So let me know your questions down there. Of course, you can check out the camera for yourself by following the link in the description of this video, of course. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well if you enjoy the video because there's new content all the time. We'll be doing some actual proper videos about a couple of the lenses I use with this as well because I really enjoyed my time, especially the 150 to 400. Woohoo! What a lens. So absolutely look out for those in the near future. But until then, all that's left for me to say is, as always, thanks for watching.